Welcome to BizTech's Trade Conversation Show. Today, the conversation is about the direct selling industry in Malaysia. Now, we talked to the Direct Selling Association of Malaysia, which was established in 1978 as a national trade association aimed at promoting the direct selling industry on both a national level as well as international, as well as acting as the de facto voice for the industry. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and our guest today is Dato C.G. Tan, president of the Direct Selling Association of Malaysia. Dato C.G., welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting, Brian. Now, C.G., for a start, could you give us an overview of the industry as well as uh, the Direct Selling Association and its history? Sure. Uh, the industry, like you said, uh, the association was, was uh, founded in 1978. Um, and uh, we have now over 126 member companies, majority of the uh, international companies and the, the larger local public listed direct selling companies are our members. Uh, the industry for in 2020 is 21.5 billion uh, ringgit. We contribute uh, to, to the economy. Uh, and our members contribute more than half of those uh, sales uh, in the industry uh, with uh, over 4 million distributors uh, throughout the whole country of, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we work very closely with the Ministry of Domestic Trade and uh, we are affiliated with the World Federation of Direct Selling Association. And uh, we are very proud to say that Malaysia is ranked seventh in the world uh, among all the direct selling companies uh, in the world in terms of revenue. Uh, and we are fourth in Asia Pacific. And I'm going to come back to you on that, the, the fourth in Asia Pacific and, and seventh in the world and, and why Malaysia is a very fertile market. But before that, can, can you explain the difference, which I think many of our audience are confused about in terms of direct selling, network marketing, and multi-level marketing? Very good question, Brian. Um, yeah, direct selling or started well maybe a hundred years ago uh, when when um, uh, the the seller the selling method is used to sell uh, a product through word of mouth and uh, cutting out the middleman and the people who sold the agents the distributors um, get a commission from the sales of, of this product. And that's, that's direct sales. Um, and then as it evolved, uh, then came the single level, multi-level uh, mail orders. These all fall under direct sales. And basically direct sales meaning uh, the seller, the owner of the product, the manufacturer sells directly to the consumer. So, uh, so to, to answer your question, uh, network marketing is actually a, a, a marketing system where people create sales through a network of friends, through a network of their distributors, through a network of their sellers. And, and, and it's, it's, it encumbers, uh, network marketing covers everything under direct sales. It can, in fact, even now, uh, uh, when, when people share news about a, a good movie, that's part of network marketing, if you will. <laughs> So, uh, so coming back to the different types of direct sales, uh, single level is where uh, someone sells a product and recommends to person A, and person A recommends it to person B. The seller gets an overriding commission only at the first level. Okay. Multi level, uh, there is a a different. Like, like the word says, it goes different uh, into many layers. Uh, you can sell a product and we encourage you to develop your network. And then when you build your network, you get an overriding uh, over the different levels as well as a business uh, in, in your, within your network. So that's many layers of, uh, of uh, a payout. And that's why it's called multi-level. So the marketing plan for a single level marketing company and a multi-level marketing company is, is definitely a lot more different, a lot more uh, complex and, and a lot more rewarding. And, and that's why, you know, when, when someone mentions direct sales, uh, it can be a, a company that sells product directly to a consumer uh, and <clears throat> it can be 
a single level marketing company can be a multi level marketing company uh, and for a for a, in, in the modern world when people talk about direct sales they like to uh, associate it with network marketing and network marketing is just just a, a system of people selling through friends through through a network that they have built up now this is where the, the tricky bit comes in and and that's where the industry has gotten a bad uh, bad name um, a lot of illegal schemes or pyramid schemes mask themselves as direct selling uh, uh, schemes but actually they are ponzi schemes how do we distinguish between legal and illegal schemes like ponzi schemes well first of all um it is the other way around these uh, illegal schemes investment schemes or ponzi schemes they hijacked uh, um, and and use similar uh, methods through word of mouth to to snowball uh, people to join their company through you know devious means through through uh, lucrative returns that are not uh, not practical so so direct selling has been uh, used by this company to to generate to, to cheat people right uh, so basically how do we differentiate now Malaysia we are very lucky because we are one of the earliest countries in the world to have a direct sales, a direct sales act, the Akta Jualang uh, Langsung, that protects the consumer. So uh, to differentiate between a direct selling company and an illegal scheme, first of all, a, a distributor, okay, I wouldn't say an investor, a distributor, someone who's interested in that scheme, must request the company to show them a direct sales license. Uh, the Ministry of Domestic Trade in Malaysia is the one that regulates the direct selling industry. They issue the licenses uh, and um, a licensed direct selling company is one that is uh, chances, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's almost 100% that they are legitimate. Uh, that's number one, making sure that there is a direct sales license uh, that is issued to the company. Number two, uh, the joining fee usually for a legitimate direct selling company is is very minimal you know one of the advantages of direct selling is that the the the, uh, the entry level into the business is extremely low we don't require people to invest in the thousands uh to, to come in to join the company uh and i think there is a a requirement uh, from the ministry that a joining fee cannot be uh, more than 160 ringgit. Okay. Yeah. And um, one of the key ingredients in the Direct Selling Act is that there must be money back guarantee. Any products that a direct selling company sells, if you're not happy, if you're not satisfied, there must be a money back guarantee to return the products. Uh, and that is tied very closely to the third requirement, which is there must be a 10 days cooling off period. For someone who joined a direct selling company, after 10 days, you felt that this product's not for me. I don't like uh, to, to get involved into this business. I want to quit, return the money back to me. So these are the three key things that the Direct Selling Act protects the consumers uh, that the people can ensure that they are not being cheated by any direct, uh, legitimate direct selling company. So, so for anyone who is not sure whether you are joining a legitimate direct selling company or not, uh, this is, these are the three key points that uh, one can, can uh, uh, ask the company to show proof yeah, that uh, they are genuine. Okay, that's really good. Uh, so some of the things that we then therefore need to do is got to be licensed. You've got to also, I, I suppose uh, ca the caveat should always also be if it sounds, the payout sounds too good to be true, it's probably uh, an illegal scheme. You probably have to check that. The other thing I think uh, uh, CG we've got to look at also is Bank Nagara has a watch list as well of companies, correct? Mm -hmm. so that's yes. another way that we can also do checks to ensure that we are being involved in a, 
uh, the, the legitimate company. yes 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 legitimate company uh, and for for experienced uh, people generally a direct sales product is one that is not easily substituted outside uh, meaning there is technology put into the research on the product and it is indeed uh, a very uh, unique product that is value for money meaning its efficacy uh, and its effectiveness is normally uh, quite it's cutting edge and it's proven now i want to take a, a zoom out a little bit uh, a, a cg and take a look at the overall industry itself how was the industry doing pre-pandemic and how is it now doing post-pandemic uh pre-pandemic in 2019 we were the industry was doing about 18 billion um and what happened during the pandemic uh, a series of, of things happened all right firstly when the pandemic hit people realized the importance of health and more than 42 percent of the direct sales industry in malaysia uh, are in the wellness category so when people started falling sick they wanted to boost their immune system they wanted to increase their their uh, body uh, um, uh, health they started consuming more direct sales uh, health products at the same time when people were locked at home uh, some lost their jobs some had their salaries cut they realized that through direct sales i can sell a product to my friend my circle of friends and at the same time i can earn a, a commission so so these are the two key drivers uh, that caused the pre-pandemic uh, sales to increase by 20 percent uh, in 2020 and so it continues to grow industries that basically skyrocketed because of uh, uh, the pandemic yeah i mean we we don't we don't wish to have a pandemic happen to any country right but uh, the positive side of that uh, pandemic caused the, the 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 industry to grow uh, and companies that had strong back end and uh, digitization program that were set up before the pandemic they tend to do better and 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 that's something i want to talk about as well uh, uh cg because the industry has evolved a lot in the last 10 to 15 years as well not only you know in asia but internationally uh, technology has played a key role in terms of, as you said, I think you used the word earlier in the interview, becoming cutting edge. Could you kind of walk us through some of the, the uh, you know, key milestones of how you all evolved over the last 15 years or so? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I like to, to say that technology is here to stay. And... Um, we we need to embrace the technology and we need to move with the times so companies that that have that program in place uh they they, they would have taken off better uh, uh during during the, the pandemic taken benefits of 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 that uh, technology to to help them increase their their sales uh pre-pandemic we had well we we all know that the internet Technology has has well, has been around for how many like 20, 30 years, right? Yeah. And uh, we have progressed, but our distributors, many distributors, as they as they moved, the milestone for them is uh, when social media became more popular. They realized that uh, hey, in the past where I need to use the phone to call a customer and uh, to to arrange uh, meetings with them to help ferry them to come to the company to do presentations, they realize that with technology, they don't have to do that as much. They manage to save time, they, they save cost, and, and just through uh, uh, a social media like Facebook Live or, or with TikTok uh, 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 technology, they're able to reach out and send a lot of uh, information on product, on the business, to their customers and through their friends as well. So all of a sudden, with technology, people are able to reach out to a lot more people. They are able to understand and realize the potential and the, 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 of, of the business being going global. And also one of the things that you also mentioned earlier, 
the companies that were already at the back end uh, did much better because essentially they were they were already ready to deliver to the doorstep. They didn't the, the distributors didn't have to go to the service centers and so forth and hang around and wait for product. Yes, yes. So direct sales is a lot about building relationships. It's about person to person, and uh, with with the technology, people. Uh, make use of the technology to reach out to, 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 to their customers, door-to-door -door delivery. Um, there are still some people who, despite the, the efficiency of that technology, felt that I still need to have that person personal touch. Uh, people still wanted to see a genuine human being in front of them uh, before they buy a product, before they join a business. So uh, coming back to your question, uh, people realize also that with that technology, that the logistics has to jive in uh, as, as together. Yes. And in, in, our, in our country, uh, we have also seen during the pandemic how the, uh, the, the delivery, the uh, logistics company have uh, also experienced a good business. And, and through all these uh, super apps that you can see from Grab uh, and, and whatever you have, Lala Move, uh, these, these companies tend to do better when their back end, when their apps, when their mobile apps are more efficient, when, when it's all set up, when it's tried and tested. Now, Dato CJ, Malaysia has uh, historically been a very good place for uh, MNCs, say the uh, multi-level companies and, and, and direct selling companies, especially coming out of the US, they want to come to Asia. They used to come and test their products and, and marketing plans and all that in Malaysia because we have a multicultural environment and, uh, and also then they can use it as a base to expand because we have Indian, we have Chinese. So basically you have the, the networks. Is that still the case today? Because as you said, we are the number seven in the world and number four in Asia Pacific in terms of market size. Yeah, Malaysia is a very unique uh, country. Like you said, you know, different races. Uh, usually they would come to Malaysia to test how effective the marketing plan is because Malaysians are very entrepreneurial. Uh, and, and like you said, the Malays, the Indians, the Chinese, and, and they have friends back in their whatever home-based countries in India, in China, in Indonesia. Uh, but uh, to test the true effectiveness of their product, whether their product is, uh, is, can be easily acceptable, whether their products really meet the, the, the criteria, those standards, uh, direct selling companies, multinationals generally would like to try their products in in North Asia, in Japan, in, in Taiwan. Why is uh, that? Uh, well, the purchasing power in those countries are higher. The, the consumers there are more discerning. Uh, for example, in, in Japan, uh, they have an aging population and, and that population there is um, uh, very conscious about their health. And the products that do well in, in these countries generally would be accepted in many other countries. Uh, but uh, to test whether their marketing plan is some, something that uh, the market can accept, hey, Malaysia is the place because we have a lot of entrepreneurial people who like to you know, test different marketing plans to see what makes them you know, uh, uh, better income. And can I ask you then one, one thing which, which strikes me then, because we are such a fertile ground, you will be able to spot trends. What are the key trends in the direct selling industry right now that you can foresee moving forward? We've had a big change now, disruption in terms of the pandemic, but what are the trends that you see in terms of product, in terms of opportunities, in terms of the trends in terms of people being involved in the industry? Yeah. Um, the biggest trend uh, that will impact the industry is the internet. 
where people in the past would travel long distances to share products, to share the business opportunities with friends or, or their referrals. Now everything can be done online. Um, and while I say we need to embrace technology, it is a double-edged sword. Uh, why do I say that? Because um, as you know, many people now with e-commerce platforms, they place products on there, they can start a business uh, uh, without having to, to invest a lot of money. They just set up a, a station uh, in, in the e-commerce platforms and they can start a business. So direct selling is not spared from that. Uh, uh, people are, are setting up stores um, and we are in a way lucky also because the Direct Selling Act prohibits uh, a, a non-authorized person to sell direct selling products uh, online. Uh, with that said, that creates a better awareness for, for the entrepreneurial people, generally the younger set people, to see direct selling as an opportunity for an additional income. So the age, gr age group may be coming down. Uh, majority, about 60% of the age group now in, in, in Malaysia is between the 35 to 55 range. Okay. Uh, the younger range is less than 20%. I see that range moving up as younger people see the opportunity in a direct selling uh, company, direct selling uh, marketing plan. Uh, they see that coming in, they see that opportunity. They also see that it's easy to go into the business and mainly because of uh, the internet, uh, uh, online social media. So those trends are shifting to bring in a younger group of people who are more tech savvy, who are more aware of the different types of opportunities that's available. And of course, it goes without saying, direct selling products are very unique. It is not easily available outside because of the research done by the company themselves. Uh, and when, when people uh, use these products and find that it's, it's more effective for them, they continue to use it. CG, it's been a fascinating conversation. Uh, any final thoughts before we end this conversation? Uh, yes, at the same time, I also like to, to inform the viewers that um, during the pandemic, uh, like I said, people realize the importance of health. Please take whatever health supplements you're taking now that's helping you look after your health. And two, if they need an opportunity, uh, don't lose hope. Direct selling is here to provide people an opportunity to, to you know, gain some some income to put food on the table, if you will. And uh, if one finds that, you know, there's a scheme that they like to get involved in that, that they find that it's, it's quick money, please check with Direct Selling Association of Malaysia. We can provide you that information and that advice, whether the, the company is legitimate, whether the, the scheme is, is too good to be true. You know, uh, we have a... We have set up an a, a, um, ethics council where anyone who has been cheated of, of a, a scheme, uh, they can write a complaint to us and we'll help to, to um, elevate it to the authorities uh, with, our, with our analysis and with our comments whether you know, that, that, that the investment is uh, legitimate or not. So direct sales, uh, we are evolving embracing technology we are moving forward and uh, we see the future uh, as uh, as bright uh, for for the direct sales industry in the coming years uh, thank you very much for taking your time to share your views uh, dato cg most welcome thank you brian now i'm brian fernandez and i've been speaking to dato chong guan the president of the direct selling association of malaysia on biztex trade conversation show this video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thank you very much for tuning in.